Hey there Bruce, welcome back to Scarlet Hollow. You may remember in the last episode we broke that cliffhanger by giving up untold years of our life and uh, Stella has got post-traumatic stress disorder or something now and has disappeared. Let's carry on shall we? We're gonna go look for her anyway. You and Avery start back down the path to town. Oh yeah, we picked up Avery on the way. It isn't long until you once again find yourself on the main street of Scarlet Hollow. Bruce, you made it and you picked up an Avery along the way. Hope you're both doing okay, like, emotionally. Yeah, I'm not too bad. That's good, I feel like I got crushed by a steamroller or something. Joints all out of whack. Totally exhausted and super foggy. Mum has been insisting I caught a cold, and I wasn't buying it. But as of this morning, I've come around. It's definitely something beyond exhaustion, even considering the ridiculously stressful week we've all had. But I'm not going to let that stop me from looking for Stella. Do you still think there could be a rational explanation for all of this? Kanika sighs heavily. Rational? Sure. Rooted in the reality that until a few days ago I thought was devoid of all magic and supernatural shit? No. Ghosts are real, and they can suck you into illusion illusory dimensions and puppet your body like a fleshy marionette. Next thing you know, we'll find out there's a secret society of warlocks running the country or that angels are real. You gotta admit, it's kinda of thrilling, isn't it? Anything could be possible. Who knows what the new day holds for all of us. It'd be a little more thrilling if it were terrifying. All of the magical stuff that we've found so far just wants to hurt us. We need a magical being that's on our side. Where are the magical girls when you need them? <laughs> Maybe my mystical powers will finally awaken into something more proactive. I'm sick of just unwillingly channeling spirits and knowing when something go bad is going to happen. Maybe magic doesn't just awaken though. Maybe you need to find someone to teach you how to use it. Okay, who? Kanika's mum. That's a very good question. Your mum's into crystals and stuff, right? Kanika laughs. No, absolutely not. My mum isn't magic. My whole life would be alive if my mum was magic. She's totally magic. And even if she was, you don't have time to be sidetracked by a training montage right now. Stella's missing and those ditchling creatures are everywhere. Is someone manning the general store where we go looking for Stella? Screw the general store. Mum can deal. Oh, did I miss something? You good, Kanika? Just some family drama. I'm sure I was going to take a sick day anyway. I don't want to infect the entire town with whatever cold this is. Instead I'll just infect both of you and whoever else we come across while looking for Stella. So the whole town. <laughs> because we're, the three of us are almost the entire town on our own. I'm supposed to see your mum at some point today. Maybe she'll finally shed some light onto things. I'm not sure what she's planning to tell you today that she couldn't have told us all last night. Maybe she's going to read your fortune. After last night? I wouldn't doubt that she actually could. Your mum's always had a bit of that Glinda vibe going for her. Yeah, maybe I should stop making fun of her whole new age mystic thing. A lot has happened in the past couple of days. Oh, I need to take a page out of Stella's book and just block this shit out. I need to be focused. I can't keep having all these existential crises. It will be plenty of time for tea after we found Stella. Let's not dawdle. I'm worried about Stella and it doesn't feel right to be doing anything that isn't actively looking for him. Agreed. Let's get to work. Where to first? Stella's house? Good place to start. Maybe she just slept in. That's what I'm hoping. I would have already gone, but uh, I was kind of nervous about doing anything by myself today. Just in case I ran into yet another horror from beyond the veil or whatever. That's fair. <laughs> After yesterday, you make your way towards Stella's house. Kanika knocks anxiously on the door. It creaks open. The interior is cold, and not just physically. There's an absence of joy in life that leaves only a chill behind. The ghost of an empty house and the sobering dread that comes with the knowledge that your search won't end here. For the life of you, you can't remember if Stella closed the door behind her when the two of you left for the library yesterday morning. I don't sense anything supernatural here, but I don't like the look of this. Might as well invite ourselves in, right? Yeah, we should go in. Cool, I'll be brave and go first. Avery casually steps over the threshold into Stella's house. The living room is almost exactly as you saw it the other day. Whatever happened to Stella, it doesn't look like it happened here. It doesn't look like there was a struggle or anything, unless it happened in another room. Or maybe someone, or something, caught her off guard. You didn't have to add that last part. I'm going to forget you said that and just be thankful that this doesn't look like a crime scene. Stella's room. 
You make your way down the hall to what you assume to be Stella's room. She's not here. Though it's a little untidy, it's the usual sort of untidiness that accumulates when someone doesn't often have guests in their bedroom. There aren't any signs of violence. Check her computer. I'm not sure we should be snooping on her computer. Isn't that an invasion of privacy? We already broke into her house, alright? For all we know, there could be some sort of clue on there. Like a note detailing exactly where she is. We didn't break into her house, the door was left wide open. I think that still counts. I still think that's illegal. I'm with Avery. What if we don't find Stella and it's all because we didn't snoop on her computer? Sure, snoop away. But I'm not going to take part in this. I'll just be over here, studying, standing in the corner of the room, not looking over your shoulder. Let me know if you find anything. Stella's desktop is horrifically cluttered. There are simply too many files and folders to fit on her monitor. They overlap each other in a chaotic multi-layer display. That's going to take a lot of RAM. Whoa. How do we find anything on here? You don't. Come on, let's go. Check your open tabs. It would take you all day to count the number of open tabs in Stella's browser. So numerous are her tabs that you can't see a single icon. A sea of rounded, featureless triangles from Windows Edge to Windows Edge. It's certainly going to take a lot of RAM, especially if it's Chrome. Her most recently open tab is on a post of on Uncle Carl's Bigfoot Farm, a forum for cryptozoology enthusiasts. The post in question is titled, Something Big is Happening in Scarlet Hollow. Hey everyone. I was out chasing a skunk ape sighting the other day and I found these weird little guys. My friend's mum says they're something called ditchlings, but I've never heard of them before. Anyone have any good leads? Camera isn't shaky enough. This is totally staged. Clean footage is some sort of and some sort of cryptid nobody has ever heard of except for your friend, friend's mum. The only thing I'm seeing when I google ditchlings is some city in England. I thought you were legit. Guys, since when did high quality footage count as anything other than actual evidence? Those things are terrifying. Since everyone low budget, every low budget horror movie started doing guerrilla marketing, I smell an ARG. I'm serious, I've done a lot of, I've got a lot, ton of extra footage. Look what they've been doing to the animals in town, they're apparently some sort of bad omen, like Mothman. Okay, I'm listening. I love me a Mothman. I believe we. I believe you. Lucky you're falling into right into her lap. I don't trust YouTubers. They're entertainers, not scientists. The thread continues into the next day. I mean, they can be scientists, right? Hey, okay. So number one, this isn't an ARG, and I would never. Number two, you're not going to believe this, but we went into some abandoned mine last night to investigate things, and I'm pretty sure we found some tubby knockers. Listening to the knocking, we managed to catch on tape. There's a link to an audio file titled Tommy Knocker's Real Dot Wave. Just because you put the word real in the file name doesn't mean they're real. Two supernatural events on back to back nights. This is so fake. I can't believe I bought into that river run of hype. You're so full of it. YouTubers are always going to sell out to big indie horror. This is kidnapped by aliens all over again. Also, lol, doughy, white things. And now, popping, loud popping noise. This is definitely an ARG. Did you sell out to Pillsbury? Stop cyberbullying her, I'm going to call the mods. Locking this thread and giving everyone a seven day ban. No, no cyberbullying and no self promo. The thread ends. Wow, poor Stella. Remind me never to be internet famous. Here's hoping my sound cloud stays niche and underappreciated until the day I die. Search history? You check Stella's search history. She hasn't visited any website since Tuesday night. If she came home after last night's incident, she didn't touch her browser. Her search history is almost entirely work-related, a furious series of que queries for various monsters and cryptids that might fit the profile of ditchlings. That's that. I think we've seen enough. Thank God. I don't think there's any clues here. I don't think so either. This is what her room has been like for pretty much the entire time I've known her. The only thing that's changed is the computer getting a lot fancier. You could use a few more houseplants. I'll put together some trimmings after we found her. Aw, she still does have those corkboard with string things. She loves putting the strings on there. I don't think they actually mean anything, but they're more for decoration anyway. <laughs> really? Kitchen? Stella's kitchen is messier than she left it yesterday. A couple of cabinets are hanging open and a loaf of bread sits on the counter by a used butter knife. Is Stella's kitchen normally this messy? I wouldn't call this messy. It's a little messy. If this is a little messy, I don't know what you want to call my room. 
I wasn't judging. There's nothing wrong with little mares. Or a lot of mares. We're getting off track. Stella's house has always felt a little sterile to me. This feels a little too... lived in, if that makes sense. No, maybe it's just because I've only ever been over when she was expecting me. Maybe this is just a rare peek behind the curtain at the real Stella. The real Stella should call her friends and let them know that she's okay. Okay, I don't think we're going to find much else here. Let's move on. Where are we going next, though? Okay, so maybe she came home last night. Maybe she didn't, but she's definitely missing. I thought I was overreacting this morning. I hope she'd be just sleeping in. I can't believe she's actually missing. We'll find her. Where to next? Let's check in with Oscar. He's smart. Maybe he'll know what to do. I hope nothing else happened after we went home last night. He's so brave for sleeping in the house after everything we went through. I'd rather sleep in the woods with the ditchlings in some place that was that haunted. Your mum said it's safe and I'm inclined to believe her. Why would she lie? But how would she know that? Magic, probably. Well, there's only one way to find out. Let's go. Morning light streams in through the library's large windows. In the bright daylight, it's once again a place of comfort. All menace, having fled the wake of Charles Shaw Jr.'s departure. No ghost, thank God. I was not up for an encore. Yeah, it's gone. Just like your mum said it would be. I guess Oscar must be in the back. I know that's where I'd be if I finally got my house back. I've always been surprised at how unsupervised this place is. Sometimes it feels like anyone could just walk in and do whatever they wanted. Like what, steal books? I mean, they could, right? I'm not saying anyone would. I'm just saying that people in this town trust each other. A lot. It's nice. Let's go find Oscar. You make your way back toward the Annex. It feels strange to be back here on the light of day, as if the events of the previous evening were all just a terrible dream. More accurately, it feels as if the events of the previous evening were mostly just a dream. That hideous stone carving is still burned and buried in the basement, and though it's subtle and subdued, you can still feel the faintest of hums reaching out from it. This hallway really takes me back. Feels like it was only yesterday that we were last here. Blissfully unaware that our entire lives were about to change forever. It was only yesterday. I know. Kanika knocks on the door. Oh, good morning. It's good to see all of you. Bruce? He takes in the sight of you standing in the bright corridor. I hope you're doing well this morning. Please come on in. You're doing really great, Rosalina. Not a lot of kids your age can take shots that well. You're being so brave. You don't have to talk to me like I'm five. But you are brave. You really are, Rosalina. You're like, so badass. Alexis is right. This is more than more most people have to deal with their whole lives. And here you're taking it like a champ. Dr. Kelly's kind demeanor vanishes as she turns and glares at you. Oh, I see we have visitors. Their glare vanishes as she takes in your new visage. Her features soften to a look of shock and concern. Mr. Gutierrez told me what happened last night, and I must admit I found it hard to believe, but your face? It definitely looks like you've had years stolen from you, whatever that means. It's concerning. I'd like to give you a physical. So wait, you just believe a ghost stole years of my life? Sure. There's plenty of evidence that something happened to you right in front of me. So, you're gonna get a, get your physical? I guess so. <laughs> oh my god, there's so much. Okay. Glad you're taking this seriously. I'll be at the clinic all day. Feel free to stop by when you get the chance. Your examination finished. Dr. Kelly returns to Rosalina's side. How's Rosalina, Doc? She can tell us herself. What do you say, Rosalina? How are you? Tired. My leg hurts a lot, but the medicine is helping. It's not so bad now. Plus, I got to lie down in an actual bed last night. You have no idea how good that felt. Thanks, Bruce. I can't believe you got any sleep last night after that ghost stuff. I just sat on the couch with all the lights on. I don't think I slept at all. I really needed some rest after, you know, the hospital and my foot. Your body is desperately trying to get you re to rest. All that activity yesterday was pretty brutal on your injury. It's never going to stop hurting if you keep pushing yourself. So what are you not going to do today? Anything? That's right, you're staying right here. No walking around, no investigating haunted houses. Sorry, Dr. Kelly. I should have been better at stopping you. I take full responsibility. As your father, I should have... No need for anyone to take blame for anything. It's the hospital's fault for sending you home at all. It's gross negligence if you ask me. But give it time. Then you can do all the activities you want. Right, Rosalina? I'm guess guessing Charlie didn't come back for an encore? 
Not as far as I know, I slept in Rosalina's room to make sure- I made sure I put heavy objects on top of the hatch, just to give myself a little extra peace of mind. But thanks to you, I didn't see or hear anything all night. I think we're in the clear. I didn't see anything either. But even if something did happen, I wouldn't know. I was asleep as soon as my head hit the pillow. I'm too tired to worry about ghosts anymore, to be honest. Losing a limb will do that, especially if you decide to tromp around the next day like nothing happened. I would have been fine if it weren't for Charlie. Good thing he's gone then. And let's hope he stays gone. How's Reese? He's fine, had a rough night, but he'll recover. He's used to this sort of thing. He just needs a couple of days to get back on his feet. That means no more excitement, not even a movie. Sorry to hear that, Dr. Kelly. Um, you talk about him like he's a child? When you're a parent, it doesn't matter how old your kid is. They're always a child to you, especially when they need to be taken care of. Have any of you seen Stella since last night? Not since dinner. She hasn't gotten in touch with any of you? She texted me last night, but I haven't heard from her since. I feel terrible. This is my fault, isn't it? I should have done a better job warning you, right? Stella was practically banging down your door to try and get evidence of ghosts. I don't think you were going to be able to stop her. There was no way you could have known how she would react when she found it. I didn't even think she knew how she'd react. And besides, you didn't know how bad it was going to get. You can't blame yourself for everything, man. I know you probably feel like it's your responsibility to make sure everyone around you was okay, but sometimes that's just not possible. You're only one guy. That's what Rosalina's always saying. I suppose I do apologise more than I should. You really do. Warn Dr. Kelly about the stone carvings and what you felt in the clinic. We found something in Oscar's house last night. A stone carving that gave me a vision about what happened here. There was one in the mines the other night too. Both of them, both of them had a sort of pull on me. Whatever they are, there's something like them in your clinic. I felt it last night. Those things are cursed. It's only a matter of time before something terrible happens at the clinic. You and Reese have to leave immediately. No, I don't think we will. Just because you've decided to try and involve yourself in everyone's problems doesn't mean I want you to invade my space and try to deconstruct the life I've built. All of it based on what? A feeling? Leave us alone. My son and I are fine without your help. But if something does happen in the clinic, aren't you worried about Reese? If it's anything like what happened to us last night, he'll be fine. If something happens, I can take care of him. So none of you need to come snooping around. You remain silent. So you got your beds, you got your nest of pillows, a helpful friend by your side, and a cat to keep you company. Seems like you're all set. Make sure you do a whole lot of nothing today. I will. Bye, Dr. Kelly. Yes, thanks again for coming down to see us, Joan. Not a problem. I'd much rather she stay put than have to get in and out of cars. I'll call later today and see how things are going. Hope the rest of the week is less stressful for the both of you. Goodbye, Rosalina. Make sure to stay put and keep Pixel company, okay? Dr. Kelly turns towards you again, her usual glare absent. And I hope you'll take up my offer, Bruce. I'm concerned about you. And then she pushes past you to leave Oscar's house. We'll let you kids have some space. Alexis, why don't you find a, figure out a restful activity for you and Rosalina? We'll do, Mr. Gutierrez. I brought some video games and puzzles from my house and some movies too. Whatever you want to do, Rosalina. Oscar ushers you down back to the library. What's up? Is everything okay? Yeah, everything's fine, or at least much better than yesterday. I can't thank you enough, Bruce. I'd like to be as helpful as I can from here on out. Now that our little situation is dealt with, I finally have time to dig into the town archives. Our house was haunted because someone was murdered there. The mine collapse the other night was the site of a mass grave. With enough research, we maybe we'll be able to get a step ahead of the next crisis. Maybe we can actually preempt it. That is assuming there's going to be a next crisis. But something tells me we aren't in the clear yet. We should compare notes. Not that I have any to start with, but if you know anything that might narrow down my research, it could save me a lot of time. I don't think we actually know that much more than you do, but I've got some hunches. I kind of but feel like there must be some inciting event, since everything started getting weird seemingly overnight. What that inciting event was, or where to start looking for it, I have no idea, but it's something to keep in mind. Avery stares at you. I mean, it's obvious, right? Just so things only started happening once Bruce got here. Kanika shoots Avery a glare. No, we're not throwing Bruce under the bus. 
What? There's nothing wrong with being a magical catalyst. Sure, there's probably nothing wrong with someone being a magical catalyst, but there's definitely something wrong with saying someone's a magical catalyst. If people get the wrong idea, we're only a couple of steps away from the whole town deciding to shore him. Nobody's going to drag Bruce into a witch hunt on my watch. I like to think we've outgrown the days of running people out of town on rails. I'd rather play it safe. Don't worry, it's not like I'm going to run around telling everyone that Bruce magicked a bunch of terrible disasters into existence. But if there's a catalyst for all of this, why wouldn't it be a lost Scarlet finally coming home to Scarlet Hollow? If I may, Bruce getting into town isn't the only major event that has happened lately. Pearl Ann died over a week ago, and those creatures in the woods were already reproducing by the time he arrived. Not to mention, I started seeing things in our house before Pearl Ann passed. I think. I never thought to make a note of exactly when the spirit made itself known. If there's a root cause for all of this, hopefully there's a way to put that the genie back in its bottle. I'm going to do my best to find out if there's been any similar events and whether there's anything special about Scarlet Hollow that might explain what's going on. Those carvings I warned Dr. Kelly about are important. To think there was something like that under my house all this time and to think someone must have put it there. But who? And there was one in the mines and if you're right, there's one in the clinic. Maybe that's what I should be focusing on right now. How many of those things are there? If we're lucky, maybe just those three. But I'd rather not count on it. Good thing Bruce has an open appointment with the doc. You can look around for clues while you're there. And it's probably a good idea to see her anyways, for your health. One way or another, I'm going to find myself back there soon enough. It's faint, but I can still feel the pull of that clinic door, and it's only getting stronger. Well, you have an open invitation to visit at this point. He has an open invitation for a physical. I don't think Dr. Kelly is going to be too appreciative of that turning into an investigation. We should be more cautious about what we do next. We don't want anyone to get attacked or possessed by even more ghosts. Even if it is to help a friend. I don't know if we have time to play it safe. Just give me a day or two to do some research before you do anything rash, okay? We have a carving right here. Maybe studying it can give us some new leads. Not a chance. I know the ghost is probably gone for good, but that thing is evil. And if there is the slightest chance of that thing, of that going back down there, triggers something, it's not worth disturbing. At least not until we know more. My daughter's safety comes first right now. We finally have our house back and I'm not taking any risks until we know what we're dealing with. No arguments here. I think Dr. Kelly is hiding something. Dinner last night was weird. I don't think we need to go around accusing anyone of being deceitful. No, Bruce is definitely right. I know that's probably not a, not great to hear since Rosalina really needs her right now, but something is up with Dr. Kelly. I'm worried about Reese. She seemed pretty normal in there, even if she was a little terse with you two. She's pretty nice to Rosalina, I'd say. Yeah, she likes sick people. And kids. People who are easy to control. I request we drop this line of thinking. We don't need to turn on each other based on pure speculation. Besides, she took me at my word about everything that happened last time. That has to count for something, right? You said you wanted leads, man. Whatever we're doing next, I feel like we're missing a vital team member. We need to find Stella and fast. I agree. We need a brazen energy if we're going to do any serious sleuthing. See you around, Oscar. Let us know what you find. I will. Good to know you have an open invitation to the clinic today. Finding Stella should be our priority. But it wouldn't hurt to check in on Reese later. Wouldn't hurt for you to get a checkup either. Um, I don't know where to go now. Try the diner? Good idea. Folks tend to congregate there. Maybe we'll run into someone who's seen Stella. He's hoping Winnie doesn't try to rope me into clocking in early. Feels like you've walked into a private meeting. The back booth is full of miners and they're having what seems to be an intense discussion, their expressions gravely serious. What's going on? There's a strike up at the mines. They made their diner, the diner the base of operations. When you asked for the morning off, I didn't think you'd be showing up with friends. Sorry, Aunt Winnie. Stella's gone missing and I've been helping these two track her down. You haven't seen her, have you? Don't you apologize now and I can't say I have. Should I be worried about her? I hope not. We're not interrupting anything here, are we? Of course not. Any paying customer is welcome. As long as you aren't about to step on anybody's toes or cause a fuss. The miners in the back are too engaged in conversation to notice you enter, and instead of speaking in hushed voices, argue with each other loudly enough for you to easily overhear. 
sure the shift schedules are tough and sure we don't get enough time off for me to see my family as often as I'd like but this is the best job I can get right now. Listen kid, you're only a year or so into this gig. Trust me, the longer it goes on the more it sucks the life out of you. At first you're just unhappy but you think you can weather it until you find something better. A paycheck's a paycheck, I get it. But the next thing you know you've lost years of your life to a company that doesn't give a solitary shit about you and uses up every free second it can suck out of its workers and pays us just enough to survive but not so much that we can ever save enough to get the hell out. Zax, we can get fired for this. I really need the paycheck. My sister needs the paycheck. I'm the only reason she can afford her tuition right now. I can't get fired. And this job still has its perks, like the company housing. I can't afford my own place and send money back home. I don't know where I would live if I didn't have this job. Right, the company housing. How generous of the big boss to put you up in a company-owned shack that ain't had proper maintenance done in decades. You know how she uses the housing as an excuse to pay us less, and the company housing means that almost anyone in the whole damn town owns the place that almost nobody in this whole damn town owns the place they live in. It's why the Scarlets can keep getting away with whatever they want. Zax, we don't have the numbers, man. You know this is risky, riskier than most of us can afford. We would have the numbers if you would stand with me and not let the management's scare tactics get to you. It's not scare tactics. People like her now. That woman ran into a collapsing coal mine and saved three children from being buried alive. I feel you, I really do. But how are we supposed to organise a strike against a town hero? Are you trying to tell me the mine collapsed less than two days days ago is why you don't want to strike? It's a bad time, Zax. It's always a bad time, Baker. It doesn't matter whose name is on the deed for the place. Without us, there's no mine. We've got him against the ropes. We can't back down now or they'll come out swinging. Hey, have any of you seen Stella? She's missing. The mine has turned toward the doorway, all eyes glaring at you in unison. The YouTuber? We ain't seen her. Harrison's voice drops to a barely audible mumble. I hope she's okay. I guess we should get going. <laughs> I'm not getting involved in this fucking strike nonsense. You turn and leave the diner. Avery and Kanika's is trailing close behind you. Still no sign of Stella. Before you can suggest your next move, you start to feel woozy. Spots form at the edges of your vision. Your legs suddenly feel unstable. Your body sending you clear signals of exhaustion. And then it passes. Still, it probably won't be long before your body needs a chance to rest. And you should plan your next move wisely. Shit. Oh, well, let's go have tea with your mum. I'm supposed to get tea with your mum today. Maybe she'll have some ideas. That'll give me a chance to sit down. Sure, we can humour her. She's probably going to give you some rocks or bundles of herbs for protection or something which might actually work who knows guess there's only one way to find out let's do it the bells of the general store chime welcomingly as the three of you enter kanika there you are you're supposed to stay in bed today remember and hello you two hope you both recovered from last night's fiasco sorry mum it's just that stella's missing and i stella can take care of herself unlike you you need bed rest and lots of fluids you don't need to go running around town spreading that cold ears Go on, get up to bed. I'll be up in a minute with more tea. I think it's some kind of important thing to talk to Bruce about. I'm really feeling okay. I want to hear what you wanted to say to him. I'll just be doing a tea reading. Haven't those always bored you to tears? Okay, you're right. I'm not feeling well. I should really lie down. Bye, Bruce. Kanika turns and heads toward the stairs without saying another word. Something isn't right here. But it's hard to put into words or pin it down into thoughts. I'm sorry to be a bad host, Avery, but I was hoping Bruce and I could do our reading in private. I'm sure Winnie needs help at the diner. Oh, you're right. I totally left her on her own today. How much power does this lady have? She's like... There's no way Kanika would back down like that. No way. Fine by me. I wouldn't want to mess with your tea vibes. I'm sure those leaves are very particular. But before I go, I did want to ask. Are you a witch? As flat as I am that you think I'm magical, I'm just an old lady who likes tea and has a few unusual hobbies. Like I'm just saying, doing stuff like reading tea leaves is pretty witchy as far as I'm concerned, but I won't push it. Though just so you know, if you are a witch, you can totally tell us. We'd be cool about it. I'll leave you all to your not supernatural private tea leaf reading. We'll catch up tomorrow, Bruce. They make their way out of the general store, disappearing down the street in the direction of the diner. Shall we? Civil motions toward the tea room. Okay. Please have a seat. I'll bring you a fresh cup. You take a seat at the small table at the edge of the room. It's dark here, only a sliver of sunlight able to filter through the heavy curtains supplemented by the bright by the bright grow lights over the plant in the corner. Sybil joins you at the table and places a cup in front of you. 
It smells light and citrusy, with an undercurrent of decaying earth. It's the same tea you sampled with Avery at the diner on Tuesday. I'll be able to do a reading once you're done. Until then, how about we just chat? Drink the tea. Let's just get this done. You take the tea, sipping it delicately, the citrus smell is fleeting, quickly replaced with the earthiness at its core, like you've taken a mouthful of dirt. But the aftertaste combines the two flavours into something soothing and medicinal, and you find yourself feeling more comfortable, your muscles relaxing for the first time in days. It's soothing beyond what you would expect out of ordinary tea. There must be something magical at work in this blend. The tea is gone before you know it, and the small, the small cup empty, save for what's left of rehydrated leaves coating the bottom. Unless you're mistaken, the tea has also helped with your condition at least a little bit. You still feel aged and worn, but you're a little less tired and a little mentally sharper than you were a few minutes ago. Oh good. Glad you found the tea palatable. Enough to drink. I sh it should do you some good. It's one of my more medicinal blends. Now onto business. Sybil takes the cup from you, staring thoughtfully down at the sludge. Oh dear, this doesn't bode well. You've just about every warning that can fit in the bottom of a cup. Cross, kettle, hourglass. All of these mean death, misery, difficulty, and the hourglass ties it all together with definite urgency. It's fair to assume that this has to do with whatever brought the dishlings. Something is coming, and whether any of us can stop it, I'm not sure. But we may at the very least be able to figure out what it is. And there's a central central figure here, a cat, an enemy, lurking in plain sight. I'd like to see. I'm sure it wouldn't make much sense to most people. It'll probably just look like a confusing mess of old leaves, but you're free to take a look. You take the cup, staring down into it. It's just leaves, there's no pattern, nothing swimming together, and the dregs of your tea to give you any warnings or premonitions. After a long moment, Simple takes the cup back from you. I hope that settled your curiosity. Don't worry if you couldn't make sense of it, it takes years to learn this sort of thing, even for someone with your propensities. She winks conspiratorially. The cat. Under our nose? Um, Dr. Kelly? Just a guess. She's been nothing but hostile since I met her. Joan, Joan Kelly is a just a very blunt woman, bless her soul. Reese's condition puts a great strain on both of them, and I'm sure she doesn't mean to come across the way she does. That kind of stress would do the same to anyone. But she's not a friend of yours, and she's not family. So she lacks the closest required to be the cat. You don't have to figure out an answer right away, it often takes time for the mind to connect the dots. Just be on guard and keep vigilant that someone close to you isn't to be trusted. We know from the ditchlings that something terrible is coming your way and it's likely that it's connecting to, connected to some hidden enemy. Perhaps you could try to counteract whatever might be planned for you. Judging by what you told me last night, those stone carvings, seals, whatever you call them, I think it's likely they have something to do with this. Until the cat reveals itself. It seems like your best course of action is to seek these carvings out, piece together what you can from your visions and arm yourself with information. Have you sensed any others around town? Do you think you might be able to find another? Yes. Your thoughts drift to that door yesterday, the one that seemed to draw you in, urging you deeper into the clinic. Even just remembering it is enough to tug at you, compelling you to return to open to see what's on the other side. You can find Stella later. Maybe you can even find her there. What's important now is finally seeing what's hidden in that clinic. I think I found another in the clinic. That's good. If you can find your way inside and uncover another stone, that would give you a leg up on your adversary. You'll just have to be careful to avoid the doctor. Something tells me she won't take too kindly to you sniffing around her clinic. If I recall correctly, there's a hill that'll take you nearly all the way to the second story. And she never locks any of the doors up there. Just in case that's helpful information. I think that's all the help I can offer. I hope this conversation has been illuminating, even if it's just brought up more questions than giving clear answers. Thanks. I'll let you know if I find anything. Glad to hear it. I hope all goes well, and I wish you luck. Hopefully you won't need it. Thank you again for humouring an old lady and stopping by for a chat. With a small grunt of effort, Sybil gets up from the table and you're escorted back to the door. And remember, be careful who you put your trust in. According to your tea, the cat is getting ready to pounce, and merely being ready for it might not be enough. Sybil closes the door to the tea room, the bells of its door strangely flat in the stale air of the nearly empty general store. 
And with that, we are very much out of time for today. But tomorrow, we're going to hit the clinic and hopefully find that stone carving. Because I think that will bring us closer. But Jim, we'll leave it there. Thanks for watching, Bruce. And I'll see you in the next one.